Hello, it's Andy Bauer here at Object Arts. Uh, in this video, I'd like to talk you through a way of recovering from a catastrophic failure to your Dolphin Smalltalk image. Now, normally, you, when you're working on classes inside your image, you'll put them into packages and export them into external package files or store them in the Dolphin source tracking system. However, uh, while you're actually working on a class, you may find that uh, you do something to your image that causes it to fail, uh, such that you lose the most recent changes that you haven't been able to save out. Now, fortunately, there's a way around this, and uh, the purpose of this video is to show you how to restore such changes. So let's assume that I've been working on a package called Journal, which has four classes in it, and that I do something to the image which causes it to crash. Let's um, uh, do something here. Now let's uh, assign nil to the processor object and this should cause a, a horrible failure. I don't suggest you do this at home. And you see if we do that then the whole image hangs up and the only way to get around that is by ending the process. And the end result of that is that we have uh, exited Dolphin without either saving the image or externalizing our classes in package files. So let's relaunch Dolphin with the old image. But first of all, before we do that, what I like to do is I like to save a, if something like this happens, I like to save a copy of the image file and the change log and the small file, the SML file that goes with that. So let's take a copy of those into a separate directory. If I select the changes file, the image file, and the small file, uh, copy those, and let's just paste those into our um, backup directory. Okay. Um, now we can relaunch uh, Dolphin. And as you might expect, if we take a look in our package browser, we don't actually have that journal package that we've been working on uh, because it was lost in the crash. Okay, it's not in here. So uh, what we need is to be able to read through the change log where Dolphin keeps a record of all the transactions that happen in the image and to selectively restore the bits that we need. Um, now the change log can get to be quite long uh, but fortunately, one of our users, uh, Ian Bartholomew, who's a long-time uh, Dolphin supporter, has created a series of good, uh, a set of goodies files. Uh, one of it, which is a thing called the Chunk Browser, you can download the entire set of his goodies from this website. Uh, and when you've done that, um, load the Chunk Browser into your image. So let's do that now. Let's choose a small package. Let's go up to the top level and find all his goodies in a directory called IDB and we want the chunk browser and take it long to install and you'll find that that puts an icon inside the additional tools folder called chunk browser. Let's open that and now let's use this to read in the backed up changes log that we saved out. So let's go into the backup directory, choose the change log and you'll see that then this has a listing of all the changes that have been were applied to uh, our image. Now, sometimes this list can be quite long, so there's a set of filters you can apply to it. Uh, one of the most useful ones is restrict the range since the last save, uh, so it doesn't show you um, the things that uh, are actually in the image, only the things that uh, have been lost. Um, and another one that's useful is to restrict to most recent only. Whenever you make changes to a method in Dolphin, if you make multiple changes to it, there will be multiple entries in the log file. So it's useful to just restrict to the um, most recent. And so let's restrict its last change. So if we now scroll down, we see that a lot of these changes are actually the chunk browser being loaded into the system, which we don't need. Uh, but here we find that we have the um, definition of the journal files. So let's select all of these. Okay, and now we can say restore selection. And that will load in all of those different classes. 
Uh, one thing it doesn't do, however, is create a new package for you and put these things into the right package. So uh, we still need to do that. So let's go to our package browser and let's create a new package. Um, let's just create it here for the time being. Let's just call it journal. Okay, and now I can go and load in the uncommitted classes, uh, which are listed here. And you should see that we're now back where we started. So that's a great way of being able to restore classes that have been lost because of an image failure.